stand to do this in 30. And for a pledge, the flag is over here. Mr. Grove, happy birthday. Would you lead us in the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And pause for a moment of silence, please. Thank you very much. Welcome to our meeting. Uh, regular meeting. We are here to accomplish the business of schools for the sake of our students. We do want to hear from our citizens, and there's time for public comment prior to action items on the agenda. We ask speakers identify themselves and their home district. Uh, we also ask that they, uh, that your comments are limited to three minutes in order to provide equity to all speakers and to ensure our meeting is reasonable in length. If you have more information that can be shared in three minutes, please leave materials behind. For the board's review, uh, the moderator will ask you to conclude your remarks as time has elapsed. If you have questions during the session, you may ask for clarification from a school board member or school administrator after the meeting is adjourned. Thank you for coming. Uh, is there a motion to adopt, adopt the agenda this evening? Mm -hmm. Do you have a motion to sign? Is there a second? Sir. Second, Mr. Brunner. Any comment? All in favor, aye. All right. Aye. 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 So we're a report from the student ladies on Natalie Campbell. Ms. Campbell. Hi. Good to see you. Um, hi, school board members. Hi, I'm Natalie. Natalie, you all know. And I have talked to a lot of students in the past, I think it's been two months since I've last seen you. And um, can I just jump right into it? Oh, sure. Okay. okay. Time. Um, something that a lot of students have brought up is the water fountains in high school have been an issue, I think since I was in eighth grade, they kind of, not only do they just kind of taste weird, like, anyway, they taste weird, but also the pressure of the water fountains is very small. So it's like, it takes maybe two minutes to fill up a whole water bottle, and that's not exactly a good thing for a bunch of thirsty teenagers. And like, I try to talk to the kids about it, like, what else do you want me to say? And they're just, they all really want to talk about the water fountains. Sure. So that has been an issue that a lot of people have wanted to talk about. Okay. Good. 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 Season, which are track, softball, baseball, and soccer. There are no games this week, but next week we've got a lot of different games coming up, mainly for baseball and soccer, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have a Shenandoah trip. The juniors and seniors are taking a trip to Shenandoah, huh? and the junior class, Miss Sanborn, has planned a trip for the juniors to go to. The Air and Space Museum this um, month on the 15th. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay. Did you see the eclipse? Yes. We did see the eclipse. Um, the bells were held for maybe 10 or 15 minutes, and we all went outside. They gave us all glasses, and we all saw the eclipse, and we watched it from the football field, and it was a lot of fun. I mean, it's it's fun when you first look at it. It's just kind of boring after a little while. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think the kids, the kids, us, we liked to have the chance to go out and watch it because, you know, a lot of people can't, probably wouldn't have gotten the glasses and gotten the chance to see it if they had just gone home or rode, ridden, rode the bus. Yeah, I think that was really good. RLEP gave the glasses. RLEP, yes. RLEP, yes, no. Yeah. Well, the Path Foundation as well. Yeah. Please. Put up the money in RLEP. Yes. Ask for it. I yes, guess that's what it was. But yeah, it was a yeah. coordinated effort. We were uh, at, at my work. There was um, 
we were sharing a pair of glasses, like passing it down. Yeah. <laughs> but we were not prepared. <laughs> awesome. Anything else for Ms. Campbell? No, thanks for coming out. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good to see you. All right, we have a VSBA um, honor roll presentation. And uh, I don't think our I don't think our reps did here. So not yet. So let's just wait. Should we could wait? Uh, yeah, we, when we, he comes in, can we? Yeah, we'll just wait for him. Sort of there. Sure. <laughs> sure. Okay. Sure. He or his representative. He has somebody here, but you want to wait on him. Okay. Yes. Uh, donations. We had a grand list of donations. Yes, we did. Of, I, I'm not sure you want to read this whole thing. No, um, <laughs> you can see that most of them were for the family engagement night. So what Gail's done is um, captured them all on one sheet so you can kind of see and total them up. So donations totaling $2,000, uh, $2,473. And it's cents. remarkable. There's a lot of legwork here. Uh -huh. I'm not sure who did all this legwork, but it's $20 here, $40 yes. there, you know, kind of mm -hmm. stuff. A mm -hmm. lot of work. Get look, front and back of this page. Yeah, there's a ton of work. And yes. So uh, credit for that goes to mainly Miss Bethany Bostic and Catherine Todd at the um, elementary school for coordinating the event. They did a wonderful job. Yeah. And they canvassed a wide geography too mm -hmm. to get these things. So yes, they did. That was a fantastic. Uh, <laughs> and they did it twice a year. <laughs> wonderful. Um, so uh, the board had opportunity to see the minutes. Uh, there have been some modica modifications of the minutes. The modifications that we have been passing around today have been integrated okay. into the version that's currently posted. Um, mm -hmm. So what we'll do is ask the board to uh, adopt the minutes as they are currently presented in the in board docs. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know want to make that motion? I move that we amend the minutes as, as presented in board docs. Second. Right. So, um, uh, so the motion was done on the second. I think Missy, I think Missy Beach to it. Uh, <laughs> but it's really, so at this point, that are not amended, that's how they are, that's how we're voting on them mm -hmm. in their amended yeah. fashion. Yeah. Right. Yes. The way they're currently so. posted. Yeah. All right. Um, all in favor, aye. All right, I oppose no. And so ordered. Uh, Mr. Groves, you have the opportunity to review the bills? I have. We're sitting at about 74%, which is appropriate. So we're going to be here. Right about where we need to be. A couple of counts that need to be adjusted, but that's always true. Yes. All right, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? No. I have a motion, Ms. Bond. Was there a second? Second. Second, Mr. Grove. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. It's ordered. There was, there was no homeschool report. Is that because there was no change? Correct. Correct. No change. Okay. Yep. All right. <laughs> We're going to jump to item 2.06 so we can talk to Dr. Massey for a second. Can you come? Come on up. All right. This is not a hard job here. for us, by the way. Right? Our job is getting here on time, and I apologize for being late. Take you when we can get. Yes, we will. I was picturing you pulling a calf out of something or whatever. Well, that yeah, yeah, could be. Oh, there we go, right? I was, <laughs> I was. So, this is not the first of these you have received from this board. That is and, correct. Uh, I don't know what it was we, called, but we had from the same organization. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a, the Virginia School Board Association, uh, and so this board decided that if anybody was worthy of it, it would be. Uh, Rose Hill again, and so we want to present this to you and thank you for what you're doing for our schools. Yes. Thank you. Did you want to read it? Sure. So it's just a, um, a letter that commemorates this event that the Rappahannock County School Board has submitted your name to the School Board Association in recognition for your support of the schools and for public school students in the community. We want to thank you personally for your commitment to the students in this division. A commendation certificate has been sent to the school board so that they can recognize your support of public schools at a local school board meeting. On behalf of VSBA, we thank you for your support of the public schools and for the students of the community. Excellent. Yay. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> All right.
Yes, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, the first one is just our annual Perkins plan. So it's that large document that has all of the uh, annual performance reporting, your CTE plan, and it's quite a lot of work from the CTE department and the, the chair of CTE um, and Mr. Seward. So uh, that is put together for your approval and perusal, um, and that has to be submitted to the Department of Education for our $15,000 we get from Perkins to support our CTE programs. <laughs> Sure, it doesn't cost that much for us to maintain it, does it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it is a lot. We're it doing that very much. Well. Also, speaking of lot 4.2, unless there's any questions, sorry, before I move on. I'm present. Anybody have any questions? I think it's just great that we're continuing to expand the CTA mm -hmm. that we have available. And we've been, you know, as a board and as a community, supporting that. And we will continue to support it. Excellent. Good. And that's good to mention. I know Mr. Seward has said that before, but the Trades Academy is launching for next year. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are thrilled about that. That's going to offer such a great avenue for uh, so some of our students. students. Yeah. So many of them. And we actually have right now, it looks like, sitting on 10 slots okay. in that program, which is incredible. 10. Mm -hmm. uh, we may have um, to work on a little bit of some funding scenarios because I would like that to be as low cost to no cost for for students and that, um, if, if possible, but uh, more on that. I have a meeting uh, with those folks in a couple weeks. So, so what, what would the cost be? I think we're looking at about 1200 to 1400 remaining cost. Per student? Yes. Um, Not to the student. I mean, as a, if we wanted to, you know. But what if, what if, what would the cost for, for the student, for, would a student have to put dollars in the pot? Yes, and that's what we're trying to determine at this point. Do we know how much? Well, we have to come up with 1200 to 1400 per student. Um, and anything remaining will have to be on, on the student. So we're trying to get that as low as possible. There's some, obviously some scholarship opportunities, mm -hmm. in, especially in this deal. Yes, absolutely. So we feel like there's a lot to leverage in that area, but we will be working on that and talking to quite a few folks in that, in that vein. Moving on to 4.2, Dr. Johnson, speaking of a lot of work for these federal program plans. <laughs> Good evening, and thanks for having me back. It's so good to see you guys. Yeah. Um, so uh, we have uploaded to board docs the um, application for the flow through federal funding for special education services this year. So hopefully you had a chance to peruse that. Um, that grant is broken into two separate categories. One of them, the 611 category, is funding for all special education students. So um, the total amount that we're requesting in the grant was $233,321, um, and that will go towards um, funding 75% of our school psychologists, 25% of me for my duties as special education director, it's a real bargain, and then we'll also fund two special education aides um, with that and the benefits that go with their positions. Um, through this part of the grant, we also use a good chunk of those funds, around $60,000, to maintain related services for our special education students for occupational therapy, physical therapy, and we have added into their vision therapy as we have a student who requires that as a related service now. Dr. Johnson, do you mind speaking into the mic so the camera can pick up your voice? <laughs> Okay. Um, so that's the, the biggest part of the grant. And then um, the other section is the 619, which covers preschool funding. So that is a much smaller pot, around $7,000. And um, the bulk of that will be going next year towards personnel services. Um, and then there will be a small amount left over for materials and supplies. Um, one thing I did want to point out in the grant there's a section that's called a proportionate set-aside. Um, so this is a, a 
piece of money that we're required to reserve for up to two years to help pay for services for any students who are identified that are homeschool or attend private private schools. Um, so we are setting aside around thirteen thousand um, dollars in the um, six eleven section of the grant, and then nine hundred dollars for the six nineteen. Um, as of the last December one count, we had eight students who were either attending private schools or homeschool that we are responsible for sharing the wealth with them. Um, I also like to use this opportunity when the flow through grant comes to just kind of give you an update on where things are with our special education program. Um, so as of December 1, 2023, we have 130 special education students, which is an increase from last year of about 20 students. And this is something that we have seen kind of moving upwards for the last couple of years since COVID. Um, so there's not a big surprise in that increase. Um, we did have an increased number of referrals this year for services. We had 49 as compared to 34 last year. Um, and as I've mentioned, in past years, a lot of these are for speech services. So the little ones coming in um, definitely are still we're seeing the impact from COVID and a, a dire need for those speech services to bring those students up to the same level as their peers with communication skills. And we have seen an increased number of referrals from the private schools. Um, last year we had eight, and this year we've had 10. Um, and as of now, we have 13 students who we are still pending eligibility determination. Um, we were at 10 at this point last year, so it's been it's been a big year for special education. Um, we have 143 plus if you add in the private schools, is that nine? The 130 is not inclusive of that. No, the 130 did include the private school students, but if if all of the students that are um, pending eligibility were found eligible, yeah, our number could be 143 by the end of the school year. So that's that's around 18 percent of our student yeah, population. So yeah, it is. Um, and then as far as our outplaced students, um, we, we don't have as many as we've had in past years, but we did increase this year um, from having three outplaced in um, either residential or private day schools. I mean, we have four this year as opposed to three last year. And some of those have been driven by mental health needs. Um, accomplishments of our um, special education department this year, we did um, continue to meet the results-driven accountability matrix. That's kind of our special education report card each year. Um, so everything has been going well with that. The only area where we do struggle is with the um, special education students and the standards of learning assessments. So we continue to work with that. Um, our parent involvement in meetings continues to improve due to the virtual options. Um, we're very pleased that we've been able to have expanded opportunities for remediation this year. Um, in earlier um, meetings, Mrs. Ellis has shared with you a lot of things that the state has um, brought in as far as the high intensity tutoring. And the wonderful thing is, that benefits all children, which includes the special education students. So we've really enjoyed being able to benefit from those additional resources, as well as having former employees who, even though they retire, want to come back and help support our students. So we've got several of those that are helping us to, to close that achievement gap. Um, we, again, had zero dropouts from the special needs population class of 2023. and. We're very proud of the community partnerships that we've been able to maintain. Of course, we continue to work closely with the county, the family assistance planning team, to be sure that we're meeting the needs of our special needs students and also at-risk students. 
Um, Headwaters has been wonderful in helping us this year, not only with the presentation for our advisory committee, but um, they have a private donor that has been able to support us with a service that we've been wanting to try to bring in, but we haven't had the funding called Applied Behavioral Analysis. And so because of that private donor, we've been able to move forward with consulting with, with that service this year. And then we continue to partner with our mental health um, provider, community, uh, Health Connects America, who is helping us to work with our students' mental health. So we did do our required forward meetings this year for the um, Special Education Advisory Committee, which I have given you a brief synopsis of what we did this year. And then at this time, I am also supposed to propose a list of committee members for that group for next school year that is supposed to be approved by the school board. Um, our chair will continue to be Nicole Champney and Tanya Cox will continue to assist us. Ashley Settle is joining us this year. Then we'll have our teacher rep, Kristen DeLello, and then of course myself and the school psychologist will remain as consultants. So we um, invite you to help celebrate Autism Awareness Month. We're kind of changing up the name this year, Neurodiversity slash Autism Acceptance and Awareness Month, because some of the, um, the, the, the titles for things are changing, and we're trying to keep abreast of that. So um, please feel free to join us on April the 29th to recognize our exceptional students. Thank you, Carol. You're very welcome. You know, one thing that, that I remember, um, we have typically, our school system has typically had a high number, right, 17, 18%. And, and uh, one thing that helps uh, me understand that a lot is that we're paying very close attention to our students and the most minute need that we're trying to make sure we're uh, assisting Right. right. So while it seems like a large number, I think it's because we have this attention to detail uh, to try to help the best we can uh, in, the, in some very difficult situations. Well, so, I can say over the course, we were closer to like 14, 15 percent pre-COVID. Um, so we knew that with um, and, and we we have been watching the the um, testing results of the students very carefully because with COVID, you're going to expect that there are going to be lower scores because the students weren't in school. So, you know, if a student is kind of like sitting at the cusp, we're not going to necessarily grab them up for special education services. But the deficits we're seeing, we're not, you know, when we're looking at the, um, the bell-shaped curve, the scores of 85 to 115 are in the average range, we're looking at scores the 50s and 60s, whereas, you know, typically there'd be more of 70s, low 80s. So we are seeing, you know, a big, a big discrepancy in what the students are able to do versus their ability. Mm -hmm. A lot of impact from, from one event. So are the, the lower scores, you know, they represent, uh, to me, they represent an inability for the kid to be in class and learn because of COVID from that perspective, that two year period of time was one of the reasons for that. Mm -hmm. But the fact that it was a special education designation, do you find that, that they concur or they um, yes, are these primarily well, younger kids, K one two. There is a lot of them have been in the younger grades. Um, again, you know, the speech has been the biggest one that we've seen, but um, we have seen the younger ones meeting criteria for things such as specific learning disability mm -hmm. a little bit, and that's one we we really like to hold off on. Um, Assigning, assigning definite, um, definite um, 
categories. categories for the children because when they're that young, because there are so many developmental gaps that can happen with the children. But um, we've been seeing very clear cut evidence of specific learning disability more so than we have in the past years. And then a lot of the identifications have been driven by mental health needs of students. Okay. So. That was my next question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything else? You're very welcome. So when we when we approve the plan, it includes all of the aspects of the briefing, including the new team yes. that will be leading it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Great. Great. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for your thank time. You. And that concludes the superintendent reports. All right. Thanks. Is there a report from the headquarters representative? There's a report. Yes. Um, I have a report from Mr. Noli. The Reed students are embarking on their second nine weeks of program, so they have an inflection point now. It, the section now, they're studying works of fiction. They're learning about characters, settings, and plots. Soon they'll be designing their own storyline with a plot and characters that they create themselves. They will present their stories to their peers at the end of the session in May. Headwaters recently awarded four student scholarships to pursue heavy equipment operator. You know, classes at LRCC, and they also supported two students with course fees for dual enrollment at Fall Ridge. Um, Headwater is, is continuing to work with with, the, our, with us, as well as CCLC and the NOPA 4-H Center to plan a SPARK summer camp for, for especially geared towards our summer school kids. Um, it's exciting to be able to offer families an affordable option for summer care in June and July. And the camp will include academic enrichment, sports, art, nature-based learning, field trips to local and out-of-county locations, and more. And they already, as of this writing, which was a little while ago, 120 people have signed up already. 135. Well, now it's 135. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm like, I guess that's gone up. But this is old news. <laughs> we have to close enrollment. Yeah. So oh, wow. It's already yeah. full. Okay, okay. So it's great. So too late if you'd met to sign up. <laughs> but there's other summer <laughs> okay. um, And also, Headwaters continues to work and, on finalizing a three-year strategic plan. And we, it looks like we're going to have Headwaters here in June, if, if all goes on the schedule to present. Good, good. Right. That's good. So that's what I've got. And we have two folks from Headwaters here who can fill in any gaps or fast-breaking news. <laughs> today we uh, we just uh, met with our scholarship committee and we've awarded tens of thousands of dollars to students so I'll be getting the names to Jenny Capsa which is always a very exciting time of the year yeah. and then we're in the process of awarding 50,000 to our alums that graduated from here um, so we're gonna have some happy kids that hopefully can stay in college too <laughs> it's a good day so hopefully everyone can join us for the scholarship ceremony I think it's in May mm -hmm. May yeah yeah, yeah. go ahead of graduation Great work. Good work. Yeah. Couldn't do it without you. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks. Uh, MBGS? Good. You were busy. <laughs> I was, you were busy fighting some fires. I was on the fire line. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he was busy. So I did attend the meeting um, and we, let's see, had our financial reports reviewed. We ha we did see um, a few great presentations uh, from the MBGS STEAM uh, groups that came up, and it was more uh, art-focused, so they showed off a lot of their artwork, um, and that was really neat. Um, they talked about some open positions at MBGS, which I'm not going to repeat here because I don't want no. them to steal from us. And <laughs> No, we love them, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, there was a request uh, to use some contingency funds for um, some uh, compensation for the program counselor, as well as environmental science te textbooks to launch that program. So, that's the MBGS report. You said the positions are half time. No, well, no, no they're, <laughs> they're full. Time. They're, they they're required. Like, like I just said that to keep <laughs> people away. <laughs> they're half at one campus and half at another, right? They go to Mendoza. Yes. Yeah, if somebody's willing to do that. 
Yeah. Some people only stay at one yeah. campus. Yeah. Great instructors that they find. They are wonderful. I just don't want them to take right. one of ours who would maybe fit that. <laughs> so, so, we won't say. So just stop talking about that. Right? We'll leave it alone. Move on. <laughs> you asked the question. No, I'm I'm good. Good. Don't ask. I'll, I'll just add that having a governor's school student, that there was a lot of busyness around doing a pretty serious research project in our basement over the course of his break break as well as, oh, as well as as well as you know other breaks. So, but it's a, it's an exciting theme, the theme of Mars exploration, and they all have to do projects around what it would take to go to Mars. So this, we have Mars soil in our yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, moving on to public comments, and we'd like to address the board this evening. We do have Zoom. Is anybody on Zoom tonight? I haven't seen anyone pop on, though. Mm -hmm. There are, um, no one? Let's okay. call. Um, on 7.01 is the policy updates, uh, which we'll have a month to review. Um, it's all general. I've already been through it. Is it mine, though? Yeah, <laughs> lots, lots of pages, little changes, um, although I did see a couple where they just scratched out the entire mm -hmm. policy, so it's good to know what is getting thrown out and what's getting added in. Mm -hmm. and Key to the yeah. A lot of little things. Um, all right, well, uh, moving on to action items, is there a motion to approve the CTE local plan? We have a motion for Mr. Groves, there a second? Second. Second for Mr. Rubin. Is there any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. And Carol's not here to hear this. Is there a motion to approve the SPED plan as it was presented this evening? So moved. We have a motion for Mr. Rubin. Is there a second? Second. Second for Ms. Bynum. Is there any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. It's ordered. Uh, is there any new business? So I had mentioned to the board uh, the idea of a retreat, which we've been doing annually for the last, I don't know how many years, three. three. Um, and June seems to be our target month. And so the biggest challenge really is finding a time and date that we'll, all of us will be at. Uh, so uh, uh, Mr. Rubin has let me know his calendar for June. If you all could let me know your calendar, and I'll see what I can do to book a facilitator. What? Uh, are we so the venue? Cool. I'm going to try. The venue's fine, I think. Venue's fine? Yeah. Well, it depends on the depends day. Depends on the day. <laughs> but my question is, what yes. day of the week are we talking about? So well, historically, it's been a Friday. Friday night has been our most flexible time. Any Friday night in June is good. That's your answer to my email? And is that a venue answer? That's a venue and a Okay. <laughs> um, so <laughs> if, if you can let me know your availability in June, and we'll see what we can put together. And is there, and we need to check to see, is there any grant funding that will help us with a facilitator again? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, maybe a sandwich. We can do that. Yeah. You know, we're more civil when we're not hungry. <laughs> So <clears throat> we, we can work out some food. And yes. that meeting also is technically a public meeting mm -hmm. of the board. And uh, so anybody can come, um, obviously. And, it will, um, and there's no agenda. Uh, the agenda is we are there to have re a retreat topics discussed. And we will be reviewing our norms and protocols and, you know, behavior just to see if we need to update anything but then we'll also be talking about whatever we want to talk about at a retreat in Memphis so yeah. anyway so. just looking at the calendar for a, mo for a moment I see that May 31st is a Friday which would be a lot easier for me than any of the other Fridays in June I'm saying the 21st May, May 31st, 31st is the the last I can't do that no, you can't home. do that okay, no, I'm okay. In, okay. I'm in, and it doesn't have to be a Friday night. It can be, um, you know, and okay. I, and there's some that have constraints that are more than others, sure. like the planting, the planting people, and <laughs> harvesting people. Right. So I would go for the end of June. Then. Okay. 
Yep, you can just let us know and we'll kind of use that as a starting point, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Is that, I guess I was, want, I was just wanted to know, maybe in, I don't know what section we're on. We are. <laughs> new business. We're in new business, business. non yeah, one. Yeah, I guess, I guess I wanted to, I was wondering if we have a mechanism for also recognizing nonprofits. That we've had a lot of not, two nonprofits in particular who've been supportive. And re very recently, in addition to Headwaters of Rat Panic School, is both um, thinking especially of RAC. Um, they they did they've done a lot and they're ramping up as we're looking at our um, at our fine arts academy. But they they funded master classes for our students in Philadelphia and they they actually we, I didn't, we didn't hear about this from anybody else but they like professional artists did this, these amazing like animal drawings that were held hid in a scavenger hunt all throughout the, the elementary school and you know you, we couldn't have bought. That art from exactly. these amazing artists, and I, I think it would be appropriate for this board to really recognize this it, it very. I mean, like no other school has a, this many professional artists who will take the time to draw an owl or a bird or, or other things in a very. It was it made it, it elevated the whole experience. I we think, can always. Um, I mean, this board could always have a resolution. It doesn't have yeah. to be the. BSB yeah, it doesn't have to be SBA, yeah, but I, I think we, we should do our to own. To and when we do our us. own, it's you know it becomes part of the permanent record of the county type mm -hmm. of things. It's a, something we can put together. Yeah, I, I'd like to see that commending it's, resolution. Yeah, commending resolution. Yeah. Just because mm -hmm. sometimes these things that don't so come under so, this so, list, yeah. we're important. Yeah, maybe uh, yeah, let's get an organization out there that we think is um, the right. I would right nominate person. RAC for a, for a special recognition, especially as we're. Getting ready for Academy. And it's great timing because yes. next month we uh, Ms. Page is coming in to present what she's mm -hmm. developed for the Arts Academy. Great. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it's actually great timing if we could maybe try to do that for next. Yeah, that'd be great. Awesome. Yeah. We can do that. All right, is there any other new business? Is there any requests for future agenda items? Our next regularly scheduled board meeting is May the 14th um, in the same room. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a motion to go into closed session? And I move the board to meet into closed session for the following purpose. To discuss and consider the appointment of staff for professional positions, resignation of professional and classified positions, sick leave bank request, and discussion of the superintendent's evaluation pursuant to Virginia Code Section 2.2-3711A1. We have a motion, Mr. Groves, or second? Second. Second, Mr. Rubin, all in favor, aye. 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 Close, no. And we will uh, go to another room for closed session. We're going to be there for 15, 15 20 minutes if you want to hang around. And we'll come back and uh, do motions and adjourn. And um, so annually, just so you know, annually, we do the superintendent's assessment. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and so it's a big deal. So it actually is, and it's very formal. And, uh, and as, so you know, that's what, one of the things that this board is, is busy doing in the background. So um, anyway, we're, that's one of the things we talk about and we execute. And so the, that actually is due in May mm -hmm. at the very, uh, very next meeting. So. All right, thanks. And we'll be in closed session for a little bit. We're going to go here. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I know. It's great to see you. So,